<laughs> Welcome to Chop Moy Chats, episode six. I'm here with Kieran Walsh, business owner, trainer of fighters like David Penipede. Who else have you got there? Max McVicar, Diandra Martin, Gabriel Duramos. The whole lot, the WC <laughs> alumni crowd. So if you like this episode, please like, subscribe, share amongst your friends. You can find it on YouTube and Spotify. So welcome, Kieran. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, man. Uh, I know you're a bit wet. You've just come, <laughs> come, come, come from the, uh, the downpour. He, he got stuck in uh, where I live in Bangkok. And uh, unfortunately, it was down. So uh, hopefully you get a bit drier over this uh, dry chat that we're going to have. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you first off is how's your gym going? How's that been going over the last couple of years? Because it was basically come out of nowhere. But where did the idea for Moy U come from? Like Moy mm. University, correct? Mm, correct, yeah. The, the idea behind the brand itself was I love American college sports. And so the U being the university was just in that, uh, in, in, I guess in that vein, it was to look like the university, but the deeper part behind it was that I love the, <clears throat> the, the fanfare behind college sports and college football and college basketball. And the thing that I like the most about it is, you you can you can speak to someone in the states and they would be like 75 years old and they still support the college team like of the area or maybe where they went or something especially when you look at like places like ohio uh, you got teams like lsu like the longhorns in texas it's pretty unreal that someone can so passionately support a a, a college for so long and for me, it was kind of, I think sometimes what we miss in Thai boxing is that, uh, like, the, 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 the following, like, the fanfare and wanting to follow a brand in the same way. And, and that was my idea was I would love to have that encapsulated or that come across into Thai boxing. So that was how it was born. Awesome. Uh, so, yes, yeah, speaking about that, because what I <laughs> what one of the things that I've been talking about with other guests is, um, you know, RWS and at the moment how it kind of looks like that collegiate sports uh, with all the marketing and, uh, you know, when you go there, they've got all the flex cam. It's like going to a baseball mm. game. So it's uh, there's kind of a, a little bit of a connection there for me. So do, do you kind of pride... Um, do you kind of pride the branding on kind of being entertaining and and yeah i think like <clears throat> the br the 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 branding i try to keep in that collegiate theme and 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 the things that we do i try to have it be like professional in that mm -hmm. respect like i want it to be shown and seen as a professional brand and my thing was always you know i want i want someone to want to buy and wear say a piece of merchandise the same way they would for their own team yep. and back home. And you can walk around the streets and you'll see guys wear footy jerseys from back home and, and they go out of their way to buy that jersey to support that team. And sometimes they won't wear it at the game. They'll wear it uh, like out on the street. But then similarly, when they're at the game and everyone's got it on, and I love how that looks. You know, you go, especially when you get to go to the States and I've been lucky enough to go quite a few times and you go to some of these bigger, it might be the NFL, it might be ice hockey, it might be NBA, and you just see this, the the same colour all across the crowd because they're all wearing it. And that's that, 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 yeah, again, that's that same sort of vision, that same sort of like entertainment and fanfare and that buy-in. Mo moving on into like branding because the branding of more you is quite strong it's quite recognizable um you know a lot of the social media stuff that you guys have done over the years has been really strong how important do you think branding is in muay thai especially now because i mean a lot of fighters like you you look at uh topic right mm. you look at topic he's got a really strong branding like if you see his logos and and i mean he does come from a des like granted he does come from a design background but how important do you think branding is in in the sport of muay thai 
Yeah, massive. I mean, not. I mean, branding is important in anything. Like, mm. if 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 you're a business, you have to have a brand, and mm. people relate to brands. And it can be crazy how sometimes you play those games or those quizzes. Sometimes you see them on Facebook and stuff. It's like I oh, recognize these brands just from the logo, and there's so many you can pick. Hmm. just from the logo or just from the colors or just a rough idea like people have to fall in love with a brand and the attention that that ba- that that brand the attention that that brand controls is important hmm. and that's how you grow and that's how you seen like i don't i don't think what we do is a special formula there's no like special ingredient there's nothing we're doing i don't think that other people, you know, like, oh, what's your secret kind of thing? It's not the Colonel's 11 herbs and spices or whatever yeah, it is, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, it's just it's just consistent good branding. And, and, and exactly that, I think, is important, like, consistent, consistency, that branding the same way across. Yeah, I, I was just about to ask you, like, what, what, what is the strategy? What is the formula to make your branding so strong? Because... Uh, how old is your gym now? Your gym is... Uh, about five-ish years, yeah. Yeah, because I remember when you started, it was about around the same time I moved over here and uh, the branding was really strong from the start and the mm. social media presence was really strong from the uh, from the start. If you could tell a future business owner who's looking to start a Muay Thai gym, what would be your advice about building a brand or start starting a gym from scratch? I mean, control... I think it's just control the attention. Hmm. You need to control the attention and you need eyes on you. You need people looking at you. And you do that, but you do that by putting yourself out there. Mm. You have to do those things which are, you have to look at trends and you have to look at what people are doing and look at the way that they're doing things and the successful people as well. And like for better lack of a word, just copy it. Just do, do, do similar. I don't, again, it's not, there's no secret to success. It's like, yes, you have to do things a particular way, but you just have to be front of mind and present all the time Mm. and be there and have people see you. And that's, I mean, that's exactly what we did and that's how it's worked. Yeah, I think that's probably the same as fighting as well, you know, like... For sure. Control, control the attention and control how people see you, direct the narrative. And that's what, I mean, all the be- some the most memorable fighters are entertainers that control attention. Hmm. Like, and you can look at so many different sports and obviously they can be known for their skills and abilities and their prowess but similarly they're known for their character yep. and who they are and we look at conor mcgregor muhammad ali floyd mayweather all of these guys like yes they're known for their skill but they're also known for how they control attention and guys like conor mcgregor are a perfect example like i i don't really f- follow or watch the ufc that much or mma mm. but He's probably had what a handful of fights in like four or five years. Yeah, and to con- to to be able to continue to control so much attention, he's just he's a brand. Yeah, and then he's brands within brands, you know, and guys like that, Muhammad Ali, Floyd Mayweather. D- d- yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. And it's about directing the attention to you. And I f- I feel like that's a something that a lot of Muay Thai athletes aren't very good at they, I mean they're getting better they're getting better but especially in Australia and I don't want to always talk about this because it just feels <laughs> like it feels like a bit of like Joe's soapbox about you know the tall poppy shit yeah. kind of thing but in Australia it's always kind of been like you're not a real fighter unless you've done the Rocky Balboa thing yeah. and, you know, eating 12 eggs a day and you've got to mm. stay humble all the time. But I feel like really to get attention, to be on the big promotions, mm. you have to demand attention. So, you know, there's a few guys out there at the moment who are playing the villain of mm. the sport and who are doing a phenomenal job of that. Um and they are getting attention now. It's not always um, 
positive attention, but it is still attention and, and mm. they're making money from it. So what do you think fighters can do to direct that attention to themselves? I think the thing is like... You- I think you do have to be honest and true to yourself and who you are. I don't think you should make up Mm. a narrative or a persona if it's not you, because then I think that's then when those, the times when it can be shot down, you do have to be unapologetically (laughs) you. And if you are a villain or talk a lot or do whatever, well then great. Like just be that. Yeah. But you could on the flip side of it. And I might take someone, for example, like, from my gym, David Penenby, like he's just a quiet, humble, hardworking guy. I'm not going to tell him to go out and start like talking and art, like, because it's not him. Yep. Yep. But if he was, it would be like, all right, I'll just try and control it within a little bit. Like mm. be unapologetically yourself. And you have to not be afraid of what people think. And the thing is though, that that's hard and it's not something – it's easy for me to say, but I know that it's different in action. Yeah. It's easy to say, oh, don't be afraid of people or what people think or what people care about you. But, I mean, that's a big part of the reason that materialism and stuff like that exists, right? It's because you care about what other people think of you. I'm not trying to say that it's easy, but you have to try. And you have to learn to put things out and and be in the face of people and be there and be willing to be shot down or be willing to be praised. And I'm telling you right now, you'll be shot down and people will take shots at you and people will pull you down. And then it's just whether or not you want to keep going or not. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's that's all it is. It's having the nuts to just stand up and, and keep going. You put yourself out there, the more people you put yourself in front of, the more people there are to say negative things about you. Yeah, yeah. You can either choose to be brave and continue to push through and deal with it, and it's not going to be easy, and it sometimes can be so frustrating, mm. or you can just not do it and stop, and that's okay too. Like, not everyone is made to be in front and center. But at the end of the day, if you want to get to a particular point, there are things that you have, like, there are these things you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 can't, you can't get to some of these places just kind of being quiet and pottering along, you know? No, and, that, and that's the thing. It's a, hard, it's a hard slog as well. Like, hmm. none of these things are easy. Like, fighting's not easy. Uh, navigating social media is not easy. People have to, I suppose, like fighters and athletes have to know realistically that it is a hard slog. Mm. Like, for example, if you're um, if you're a fighter and you're doing reasonably well, say in the amateur circuit, and then you turn pro and you haven't got much of a following, you're not going to get a following overnight. Mm. Like, you look at um, people like Dory Duncan, right, who is a great, great female fighter, great female ambassador for the sport. She's been working really hard to mm. build her, her following. Mm. You know, it's it, did, it wasn't something that happened overnight. Like, I mean, she was fighting back when I was fighting, which is more than seven years mm. ago. So... You know, that's a hard, long slog that she's put in the work to mm. achieve where she is now. Um, so, I think people also have to look at it a bit realistically as well. And it's easy to forget where people came from uh, uh, and watch right, because, right. I mean, it's just like it, it's, it's quick to forget and it's easy to be like, oh, this person appeared overnight. Yeah, yeah. Or this person came out of nowhere, but they've been around forever. Yeah. They just finally popped out after a lot of work yeah it just that's the way it works that's i mean that's just the way it is right and and imagine imagine how many more there would be if if it wasn't the case like and people people continued to push through and wanted to push through the beauty of thai boxing Hmm. whether you like it or not is that it's easier to get popular than other sports. It's easier to get to the top. And I don't say that as a crack. I say that in the sense that we have a smaller sport. Yeah. Guys go through like high school and the collegiate system in America like 
tens of thousands of they'll never make it to the NBA. Yeah. Like mm. they'll never make it to the NBA. They'll never make it to the NFL. They'll never make it to the NHL. All of these sports because it's so saturated and there's so many people competing for it. But at the moment, I feel like we're at a time in Thai boxing where we're just before that. Yes. We're just before this real rampant rise. Yep. And I mean, you and I have both and 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 anyone who's been in Muay Thai for more than maybe a decade would know what knows what it was like then. Oh yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And and now it's like we're just before that point and I think it's why it's of most importance to cement your position and cement yourself and where you are before it gets too crowded and before it gets too noisy yeah. because that's when you're going to have to work twice as hard for half the results. Yep. yep. Put in the work now, establish yourself now and it's going to... And I think that's in all points of the industry as well for sure i think that's at all levels of the industry whether you're refereeing whether you're judging whether you're doing what i'm doing like you know just general social media stuff and trying to promote it but now's the time to put in the work I'm going back to your business yeah. um one of the things i'm interested is interested in is what what is kind of the the, the vision for more you uh, from the start to to now, what was the initial kind of vision? I know, I know, we were talking about branding mm. and um, you know the kind of American collegiate mm. branding. But what is the vision? Are you creating a traditional Thai boxing gym in mm. a contemporary space? Is that because mm. that's kind of the vibe I get? I mean, the the training looks. Traditional in a sense, but with a scientific backing. Mm. Um, would that would I be going in the right direction there? Yeah, or? I think when I start, I, the my sort of vision, and I think this is important for people too, is like you don't have to be completely a hundred percent locked in. This is what I'm always going to do, and this is what right. it's always going to be right. like. Like mm. my personal vision has changed slightly over the years the the heart of it still remains the same and that has always been that the the gym as a whole is a place that you can come to learn good muay thai mm. proper muay thai without feeling like you can't go there yes yeah. without okay. being intimidated to go there the fact of the matter is most people are intimidated to walk into a Thai boxing gym whether it's the friendliest place or not but the idea is that when you get in there you feel welcomed and you feel happy and you feel like you you belong and that was a big part of it for me and it didn't matter you, your your age your sex your religion your political preferences like you just come to learn Thai boxing the outside world doesn't exist when you step into the gym you get to come and learn Muay Thai and you're part of that community the thing that exists then and there is Muay Thai the other side of it is the fighting because for me that's my favorite part like I love Thai boxing as a sport mm. and it's it's like you I need the business to support that part yeah, of it. Yeah, I need yeah, the yeah. members, I need this to support the fighting. That part of it for me was I wanted obviously to produce amazing fighters like yep. and and fighters that are well known and fighters who are technically sound and proficient and fit and this that and the other and known for like out the more you style but then Additionally, was that I want them to feel like athletes. Yeah. Which sometimes in this sport is hard because the sport is still growing. <clears throat> and we've seen a rise of RWS and One Championship and some of these bigger promotions um, where they do get to feel a little bit more like athletes. But I was going to and always will and always have worked tirelessly to give and get them opportunities yeah. and make them feel like athletes. <laughs> And that's something that I always am very like persistent on and working really hard on is I want them to feel like athletes. You know, you can definitely see it through the marketing and the social media that, you know, the, the guys like Dave and, and Max uh, treat it very seriously, um, you know, through 
the way that they handle nutrition. I mean, they're lucky that you, you know they got the affiliation with um, is it Fit Fit. Uh, fit, uh, yeah, uh, Davey's got a local food prep company, yeah, and then yeah. Max is fit and healthy chef in yeah, Sydney. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that they they take that super seriously, and, mm. and um, you know, obviously, it it always trickles down from the top. So you know, the influence is there from you to take it very seriously and and make sure that they are athletes and prepared. Um, what about? your female development because uh, one of the amazing things about Muay Thai at the moment is female development has just absolutely skyrocketed over the last three years post-COVID especially with um, you know females being able to fight in the big stadiums now um, how important is it for you to keep female Muay Thai strong and and keep it developing and rolling. Yeah, massive. Like I'm a I'm a uh like sort of a an, an equal level person in respect of like I want the girls <coughs> the I want women to have the same opportunities that the men can have. Mm. And I wanted them to be treated like they can have the same opportunity that the men can have and like we have a great team of women at the gym. And that's just sort of continued to grow organically. And they're not, you know, for me as a coach, it's about not treating them differently, but also understanding that there are some things about training women that are different, mm. like biologically. And, but that that's okay. Like it, yeah, it's yeah. not taboo. Yeah. It's not like, like that's just a part of it. Like it is what it is. You know, some 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 trainers don't want to deal with, like for better lack of a word, female stuff. And that's okay if they don't want to. That's fine. Like that's yeah. it's their gym. They can do whatever they want. But for me, I'm not afraid to have some of those conversations. And and like some of you know some of the women that we have, or all of the women that we have, like man, they're incredibly talented. And they just, like, yeah, I enjoy training women. I think sometimes, a lot of the time, they're easier to train than guys, man. Wow. They just, like, they just get in and, well, you know, the like... Trouble with, the trouble with blokes, and this is a, you know, this comes from my experience of teaching, is blokes don't listen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> blokes... I mean, and I said this in the last podcast with Andy, uh, you know... Blokes, we don't develop our frontal lobe till we're 25. And that's when most guys are fighting. We're just, they're in the prime and they're, they're fighting. God, imagine... I, I couldn't even imagine trying to take on, like, 18, 19, 19-year-old guys. Mm. Uh, you know, I taught teenagers in Australia and, God, that was hard enough. Girls tend to be traditionally more focused uh, mm. academically, but... They tend to take on more of what you say. Yeah. So in you know some aspects, yeah, they would be easier to train because they're better listeners traditionally. Now, I'm not I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes here. You know, I'm all equal genders, but um, traditionally, in an academic sense or a cognitive sense, women do perform better in in that realm of listening and applying their learning. So yeah, what what would be your advice for trainers who are looking to take on female athletes? I think f for me, it's, I mean, there's the part about what I said before, mm. like not shying away from conversations that people might find difficult, like say the menstrual cycle, right? Like yep. it's just a part of life. Like deal with it. Yeah, yeah. It just yeah, is yeah. what it is. But a lot of but there are there are, not a lot of there are trainers whom find that difficult. Mm. Or oh girls are emotional or this. No, because when it boils down to it, and I think it's you know, we don't apart we don't look at our team like oh men and women. Yes. Or boys and girls. Like it's just the same team. Yeah. They yeah. get in, they do the same stuff, they do the same 
round length. They run the same distance. They hit the bag the same. They do the same knees, same teeth, same feet. Like nothing changes. Mm. There's nothing about them that's different to the men in what they do or how they go about it. Right. Because at the end of the day, like all, all, you know, with, whatever gender you are or however you wish to identify, <laughs> like, like. I mean, there's differences in men between like a 48 kilo dude and a 90 kilo yeah. guy. Like there's always going to be differences. We just don't look at it that way. And I think just don't look at it that way. It's not about the difference. It's not about men versus women. It's just a team. And you yes. just, in the same way that you, you have to deal with different personalities or the same way that you have to deal with, um, different people's boyfriends or girlfriends or stuff like that like yeah. you just deal with the other things as well just yeah. don't 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 try to segregate it so much don't try to look at it so much differently yes it's just yeah. another person in the team whether yeah. it's a boy or a girl a man or a woman a yeah i think that's a really important thing especially in the west is not segregating the the athletes Mm. Um, you know, that I've, I've heard of, and I'm not knocking anybody's training methods or anything like that, but I've heard of, um, you know, some gyms, they'll, they'll keep the, the genders separate. But then when you look at, um, I'll, I'll use PTJ as an example. When, when I was training out of there, we, all of us did everything t mm. together. We all ran together. We all clinched together. We all sparred together, all hit pads, held pads together, and it made the team bond that much stronger because we were all doing that together. Exactly. And I mean, like, even to the point where Saturday training, um, now that was kind of optional, but I used to just try and go anyway. A whole bunch of us, boys and girls, we would go and get um, breakfast down the road together. It just... The desegregation of it, or the, or even the, a better term would be the unification of everybody mm. training together, made the team that much stronger, mm. and it made the gy the gym, uh, the gym stronger because all the beginners or all the intermediate or just the casual Joe Blow, for better lack of a word, um, will come in and see the whole fight team yeah. training together. Yeah, and it makes the community. That much stronger. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think unity is a really important, um, you know, ethos to have within mm. our sport. Mm. And, you know, I think sometimes there's, you know, there's always going to be drama within any culture or any subculture or any sport, mm. any community. But I think, like, now more than ever, like, unity is quite important and not other people mm. um so yeah unity unity togetherness T together <laughs> together for the people uh yeah anyway sorry sorry for that sort of monologue there but um so yeah female athletes you've got quite a few uh strong female athletes so from your perspective mm. um you know Gabriella is just fought and mm. she did pretty well last night. Mm. What do you think the future holds for her? For Gabrielle? Yeah. I mean all the all of like all the girls are um all the girls have been doing really well. Yep. You've obviously got Diandra who was signed to one. You've got um yep. Davina, her younger sister who won the WBC Australian title, had a chance to fight here at Lumpini on one, mm. a few other things. And you've got girls like Gabrielle as well, who's, um, I think Gabrielle is a perfect example of what we were talking about before, which was control the attention. Yes, yeah. Like yeah. If, if if I had my phone near me, I think she's got like 160,000 Instagram followers or something. Yeah. And without, without divulging what or how or where, like that does pay dividends. Yeah. You know, and she's a great example of someone who 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 controls the attention mm. and does that, yeah, really well, and has has like a brand for herself. Absolutely, you know, like the other day I saw a video where she went to went and played football. Yeah, Rexona for the Women's World Cup. Exactly, it's yeah, a yeah, prime yeah, example. Yeah, yeah, you know, and like 
a Muay Thai athlete mm. involved in a multi-million dollar sport mm. or even like a marketing campaign like that, mm. unheard of. Yeah. You know, unless like here in Thailand, like you might be the Stan Fair Texas or the girls from Looks Like Kong Din, you know, um, I feel like here it, it's a little bit easier to be a celebrity because, you know, it's kind of a close-knit scene and, and, and that sort of thing. But for for Australia to, mm. to, to break into something like that, like that's incredible. Mm. And, um, you know, she does a really good job of controlling that attention. Mm. Um, so female athletes, if you're looking to uh, base maybe... Uh, maybe even like I would say get inspiration for for social media stuff I think Gabrielle is a really good example of somebody Mm. who's doing a fantastic job of promoting herself Mm. and with promoting yourself um, you know it's something that I'm quite passionate about for for athletes big opportunities come from that like for example the Rexona women's Mm. um, you know World Cup opportunity Mm. like that's Phenomenal. Mm. I'm going to have to bleep that out. <laughs> but, you know, like, that that's huge for a, a Muay, Thai, Muay Thai athlete. And, you know, like, um, for example, Yolanda Schmidt, who was really, in, in my eyes, like one of the first in Australian Muay Thai to really take social media seriously, um, she created a, a really strong self-promotion drive for herself and she got amazing opportunities like mm. the um the, the muay thai angels tournament years ago i think about 2016 you know she won a million bar mm. and i feel like yeah she was a fantastic phenomenal athlete but part of that opportunity came from self-promotion and i think a lot of athletes really need to really need to start promoting themselves mm. more, especially in Australia. Yeah, and but again, it's like a good example of what we spoke about before, which is how quickly you can get to the, not the top, but like how you don't have as much to compete with. Right. Like yeah. we were talking about with the NBA and the NFL and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, you can take... You can take a girl... I mean, you can take a few of them, and I'll use a few examples, but let's say you can take... Uh, Diandra, mm. you know, and Diandra became known not as much for her social media activity, but for like her style. Yep. And 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 her as a fighter, and she just kept taking these big jumps in fights, and then took that fight with Yolanda. Yes. And she'd had, you know, a quarter of the fights that Yolanda had, won the fight by knockout. And then got offered the fight with one hmm. and then got offered the contract and, you know, like, boom, straight yeah. there. You've yeah. got girls like Gabrielle who, you know, she walked into Muay Yu when it first opened, not really knowing about Muay Thai, like a fresh-faced 18-year-old. Hmm. And now, four or five years later, you know, here she is. And, she, man, she's pretty well known. Yeah, she's got, yeah, you know, yeah. hundreds of thousands of Instagram followers, all these things like... You, just, that, you know, they're, they're both great examples of, because both girls are great examples of just apply yourself. Yes. Yep. Apply yourself and do your craft and you will reap the reward. And stay consistent. And stay consistent. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, girls like that, like girls like Diandra, it's like, she just never, she just trains all the time. Yeah. She's always training, you know, even when she has long gaps between fights, she's always training. Yep. Girls like Gabrielle, you know, she's always doing her posting. She's always doing this. She's always doing that. You know, like even girls like Diandra's younger sister, Davina, she's got her ACL at the moment, but she was always training, mm. you know, like, and that, I mean, that is something that I tried, that I instill in my athletes from the start because it is a thing of if you want to be an athlete, you don't get the opportunity twice. You can yeah. do everything else in life a second time or a third time. Like, you can get divorced and remarried. You can go to university again. You can do all of these things. Like, yeah. that's just the reality. But just having a look at the picture of my fiance. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. You can't be an athlete again. And I've said this on so many podcasts that I've been on. Like, you just, you don't get to relive yeah. that part again mm-hmm. because eventually someone is younger and fitter and stronger and faster and they knock you off the top. 
Mm. So you like don't waste the opportunity that's in front of you and just go for it. Yeah, I think that's a really important thing. Um, you know, in Muay Thai is, is continuing to stay there and, and not wasting any opportunity. Because um, trust me, like, you know, I... I <laughs> I was a bit sort of self-deprecating on the uh, the the last podcast with Andy because you know it's sort of like sitting there with your coach, mm. uh, reliving you know your failures. And I've always sort of been, uh, I've always been pretty open about what I would have, could have, should have. Mm. And I think you know that's in that's kind of a reason why I do what I do is so that people don't make the same mistakes. And they can go further and use this platform to push athletes in the right direction. Um, where I was kind of going to take this was how important do you think it is for people to contribute to their gym community? Mm. So, for example, a fighter has just fought, mm. okay, not injured. Uh, they might have a bit of a dicky leg. How important is for them to come back and still be involved within within the next week? Do you think? I mean, yeah, it's important because you're a team, and that's how you get better. Yeah, it's important to contribute. You know, sometimes I feel like that conversation can start to go sort of like too much the other way, like expecting too much from people, but. Yep. If you are part of a team and you want the team to grow and develop, it is also within your best interests to give back to the team. Right. And to help the team grow. Mm. And if you want to be a part of that team and you want the team to be the best that it can be, then you should. And those things can be in the way of, like, being there to train when you don't have... I mean, my guys, I don't let them not train. Yeah. If they're matched or not, that's not an option. But, like, being there to train when, uh, you know, others have a fight. Mm. Being there to help hold pads. Like, going to watch shows. Like, just buying a pay-per-view. Yep. Like, and just streaming online and watching. Like, all of these things add and they help. Like, I think it's important. I think sometimes it can almost be pushed too far. Mm. And, and there's, like, too much expectation put on people. But it is important. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, I, I think gym owners or coaches need to be a little bit careful about expecting too much from their community. Because, 100%. Because it can, it can cause a sense of resentment in athletes and that sort of stuff. But, I mean, I, I mean, it's just about finding the, the right balance and, you know, um, uh, it creating, creating a sense of community, I feel, mm. is really important in uh, gym culture. Ab- absolutely. you got to... I mean, you spend a lot of time with these people. Yeah. You've yeah. got to, you know, you've got to, like... I think there's a difference between... I mean, this is a massive, big, different conversation in and of itself. There's a difference between fee-paying people and non-fee-paying people. Yes. There is a yeah. massive yeah. difference yeah. here. Like, that's something that we have to be a bit conscious of. Yeah. And and how much is given. And, like, there, there, there is a bit of a touchy thing because we do have this... I feel like sometimes we go too much in Thai boxing on this, like, uh, like this overly Bushido code martial artsy sort of thing where it's like... You, you, I know what I know what you're you know to, what I'm saying, right? Like people, people, you know, yeah. like if so, if if for me, if someone left my gym, and this is the way I think, but others don't have to think the same way, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. this, I don't think others have to think. This is just the the way I think. Yeah. If someone left my gym, sure, I'll be upset, right? Yeah. But if someone left my gym, I'm talking about fighters. Sorry. Yeah. Members can do whatever the they want. That's like, sorry. Did, Members can do whatever they want. Like they pay. It th- they pay money. Yeah. They can do whatever they want. Yeah, like you don't go and yell and there. scream at someone when they go to a different coffee shop if you own yours. Like it, that's ridiculous. But yeah. but with fighters, if someone left me, that I would want to know and understand why, mm. not just berate them. It would not be ah you're dead to me rah 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 rah. Like if I gave them a lot, and they just kind of 
legged it and were a bit of a flog about it, yeah, absolutely, I'll be upset. For sure. I'm only human. Yeah. But also that, like, we have to be introspective and we have to figure out why. Mm. Like, why did that person leave? Was it something that... Because most people don't want to be introspective. They don't want to look like, was it something I did? Did I do something wrong to cause this person to leave? Was there something I did? But if you can sit there and be like, yes, it was, but I'm okay with that decision, well, then it's all right. Mm. Like, that's, that's completely okay. But I think you can't just push all the blame on the other person and expect them to have this, like rank and file loyalty to you that's just like a bit ridiculous yeah yeah uh, and that's but again it's the way i think other people can think completely different it, it, that's up to them that's the way i think i don't expect this like rank and file jump off a cliff for me loyalty yeah yeah like if i continue to give to you and help you I'm doing that because I want to do it and because it's who I am. But the minute that you give with an expectation of return, it can be dangerous. Mm. Mm. Giving give giving without the expectation of return almost sort of protects yourself a little bit. Yeah. yeah. You know, like you're giving, you know, I like to 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 give just because it's who I am. Mm. And sometimes I can give and I can get upset because I didn't think someone came back, whatever. But I eventually I pull myself around. I'm like, man, you got to stop it. you got to cut out. Like, I'm only human, right? It's yeah, only yeah, normal yeah. to get upset and stuff. But I, I do try my hardest to give without the expectation of return. I'm not perfect. It doesn't work all the time. Yeah. But I think we just sometimes have this crazy rank and file loyalty explanation that's a bit... Yeah. yeah, it's a bit. It's not for me. That's no, just for no, me. No, no, it's not for me. You, 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 at the end of the day, no. if you, if you, and I've always said it, like if you have a gym, you have a fight team, you have a business or whatever, like it's yours. Yeah, you do whatever you want, run it whatever way you want to. It's not my job to tell you how to do it. Yeah, but like mm. that's not. I hope that maybe I can say something that might make you think otherwise, mm. and I hope that someone can say something to me that might make me think otherwise. Yeah. Or help me make a different decision. But do you? Man, it's your gym. You earn the right to do whatever you want. It's your business. You earn the right to do whatever you want. Mm. Don't let other people tell you what to do. It's completely up to you. No, I, I, no that's... Uh, I mean, it's a really good worldview to, and outlook to take it from because, I mean, at the end of the day, it's your product. It's your, your gym. It's what you exactly. created. Nobody can tell you... Do a try. Yeah, right. I mean, people can give you advice, people can give you clues, but they can't. At the end of the day, they can't tell you how to... I mean, I even say to my guys sometimes, look, at the end of the day, like, I want you to talk to... Like, they know that even though sometimes it can be scary to talk to your coach about mm. stuff, like, I tell them it's important to have open communication. But I also say to them, like, guys, like, at the end of the day, it, it's my... Him. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. going to tell you what to do and that's it. Mm. You either jump on board or not. Mm. Like it's, you know, that it just is what it is. You you either you either trust me and you roll with it or not. And everyone should like that. Just is what it is. It's your business. You get to run it however you want. Mm. And the people that are there get to follow you however you want. So long as you're not like doing some Charles Manson, sh you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we don't need any cults. Yeah, we don't. We don't. Need I mean, cults. most gyms are a cult in a way. They're yeah, a bit yeah, culty. Yeah, they've true. got cult. They've got cultish behavior. Yeah, but awesome. you know what I mean, especially, like yeah, especially in Muay Thai. Yeah. yeah, you know, but you know what I mean, like uh, you just yeah, it's it's it just is what it is at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's a good attitude to have. It's very Thai, actually. It's a very Thai attitude. You know, supply, supply. It is what it is at the end of the day. All right, so thanks, Kieran, for joining me on Chuck Moy Chats. I think we had some pretty tangential but deep and meaningful <laughs> chats. No, it was good. It was good, different perspective. Um, thanks for joining me. Where can people find you? Uh, at Kieran Moy U on everything um, or Moy U Canberra on everything, like Instagram, 
I don't use Twitter or X now. <laughs> Facebook, <laughs> Threads. Okay. I use Threads once every fortnight. <laughs> uh, yeah. Kieran Moyu, Moyu Canberra. Tell Moyu Canberra or anything. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Follow a lot of my athletes as well. Jump on like David Penampede, Diandra Martin, Gabriel Deramos, Max McVicker. All these guys put out really sick content as well. You know, like Gabriel does some cool vlogs. Uh, Maxie's done some pretty sweet vlogs. Davey puts up training content. Diandra puts up some cool stuff. Like, follow all of them as well. I will drop the links below. So make sure that you go and check those out. Thank you. This is Chalk Moy Chats, episode six. Please like, share, subscribe. Thank you.